Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Every now and then, a technology comes along that feels to me like it could be transformational for some aspect of my daily life. I remember feeling that way when I first learned about TiVo, for example. And the first time I made a cup of coffee with a K-cup, it was a similar feeling. And the first time I tried the new Warp Terminal, I knew there were some things for which I never wanted to go back to the old way of doing things again. Because Warp is decidedly not just another command line terminal. It's a complete reimagining of what the command line can be. For those of us who've spent decades wrestling with the command line, Warp feels like it's the future that we've been waiting for. We're going to dive deep into it, really deep, because there's a lot to unpack. Before we jump in, a quick shout out to Warp for sponsoring this episode. Now, they've had no say in what I'm about to tell you. This is all me based on my hands-on time with the tool. And trust me, I've been using it for months now, before, long before they actually reached out to me, and it's changed how I work. But enough build-up, let's get to it. I spent over a decade at Microsoft, starting in MS-DOS, and then Windows 95, NT, 98, 2000, and XP. I was part of the team that built the Windows shell, the start menu, desktop, and folder interface that you use every day. Back then, the command line was my native habitat, limited though it was by its MS-DOS roots. I was used to having Bash under Unix at school, so living within the walls of cmd.exe felt pretty confining at first. I'd spent hours typing commands, debugging code, and yeah, occasionally crashing the work-in-progress system we were building. The thing about cmd.exe is that it's arcane, but it's powerful, and I love the control that it gives you. There's something about the command line that feels direct, like you're talking straight to the machine with no middleman. An administrative command prompt is the next best thing to a kernel debugger in terms of immediacy. I remember working late into the night one night, and I was trying to fix some build issue, and I had to write a custom batch script to automate a series of commands. It used some fancy tools like awk to parse some complex output from the compiler into a usable header file or something like that. It was tedious, but when it finally worked, that sense of accomplishment was unmatched. My batch script felt like a little machine that I made that did real work all by itself. Fast forward to today, and while graphical interfaces have largely taken over, the terminal is still my go-to for serious work. But let's be honest, CMD itself hasn't evolved much, and it's clunky, outdated, and frankly, showing its age. And I know there's PowerShell, but the commands are so obtuse and verbose that it's like a write-only language for me. You'll find some web page with a PowerShell command that you'll run one time in your life to tweak or fix a setting, and you never develop any real muscle memory from it because you're not using it for your daily work because it's too verbose to memorize. Or at least that's my experience with it. And that's partly why I'm excited about the warp terminal. It's kind of like somebody took all the frustrations I've had with terminals over the years and said, let's fix this. And then they did. Warp brings the command line into the 21st century with some features that make me wonder how you would ever live without them once you've used them. So what exactly is a shell? Let's break that down. Think of your computer as if it were an airliner. The shell is the cockpit where you, the captain, issue your commands to control every aspect of the aircraft. In the early days of computing, your cockpit was entirely text-based. You'd sit at a terminal, stare at a blinking cursor, and type commands like dir to list files or copy to move data around. It was like speaking a secret language that only you and the machine understood. No fancy graphics, no mouse, just pure unfiltered control. The next step up along the evolutionary ladder would be file shells, like the DOS shell that shipped with MS-DOS 5 or, say, Norton Commander. They allowed you to do simple file management in some kind of split or windowed layout. I remember my first encounter with just such a shell. It was about 1985, and I'd written my magnum opus in 6502 machine language, and I was going to make a backup to preserve it for future generations of scholars to study. And in the Commodore 64 file shell that I was using, I made a bad assumption about which side was which, and I got the source and destination backwards, meaning I copied a blank disk on top of my original, thereby searing both the power and danger inherent in such tools forever into my memory. I spent my formative years mostly working on an Amiga that was connected to the Unix systems at school, and so my lingua franca back then was either Bash or Amiga DOS, both of which are far cleaner and more expressive than the syntax that would eventually evolve out of MS DOS. In fact, the Amiga even supported Rex, a powerful scripting language that originated with IBM mainframes if you wanted to get really fancy. But CMD is different. For some reason, I can never remember how many percent signs you need to use before a variable and in which circumstances it's how many because it changes. And it's stuff like that that makes me not really enjoy scripting in CMD. But don't be fooled into thinking it's not powerful because it is in its own weird way. In fact, to sort of absurdly prove the point, I wrote a prime sieve in CMD batch script. A few years back, we started the GitHub Primes project and it has something like 100 different language solutions. 
And now there's 101 if you count this version, but the shells aren't just about typing commands. Technically, a shell is a program that interprets your actions or commands and then passes them on to the operating system. On Unix-like systems, you have shells like Bash or ZSH or plain old SH, and each one has their own features and syntax. On Windows, it's CMD or PowerShell. The terminal, by the way, is the program that displays the shell's interface. Think of it as the window into the shell's world. These terminals began as a paper teletype that evolved into a video console, and by the time the PC came along, the terminal was a full-screen frame buffer on the video card. That continued until our windowing interfaces came along, when the terminal then became a window on the main desktop. Then came the full graphical shells like Windows 95 and Windows 98 and NT, which I had my own small part in. Suddenly you could point and click and drag and drop. It was a game changer for accessibility. But even as GUIs took over, the terminal never went away. It's still there lurking just beneath the surface for when you really need it. For developers, system administrators, and power users, the terminal is still irreplaceable. Why? Because sometimes the fastest way to get something done is to simply type the command and let the machine do it. No animations, no waiting, just results. And there are a few things that ultimately can only be done in the terminal, even to this day. For example, if you've got a foreign partition that the system refuses to remove in the GUI partition editor, the command line version of disk parts can get the dirty deeds done dirt cheap if you know the right commands. But here's where things get a bit more sticky. Traditional terminals are stuck in the past. They're built on outdated designs, basically the line-based systems that date back to Unix's ed editor from 1971, which is, what, 54 years ago. And while I have a couple of cars from that era and a couple of computers from not long after, they're not things I would want to live with every day by choice. Let me paint a picture. It's about 1995 and I'm at Microsoft trying to troubleshoot a build failure. I run a command to compile the code and it spits out pages and pages of error messages. The output scrolls by so fast that of course you can't catch it. I end up redirecting the output to a file and opening it up in notepad and then sifting through hundreds or thousands of lines to find the issue. Kind of a waste of time. And that's just one example that I'm sure I repeated hundreds of times. Another time, before we had a setup program for NT, I was trying to set up a complex registry and DLL configuration. I had to run a series of commands in sequence, and if I closed the terminal or the machine crashed or I did anything wrong, I would have to start over with a fresh system image. There was no way to save my session or pick up where I left off. It's kind of like building a house of cards. One wrong move and it all comes crashing down. So you write it all down carefully and then you type it in very carefully, but it's still error prone. In a traditional terminal, if you're working on a task that requires running multiple commands, you have to keep track of everything in your head or write a batch file or write it down on a notepad. There's no built-in way to organize your workflow or share it with others. It's a solo endeavor, which is fine for some tasks, but in today's collaborative world, it feels limiting. Editing is another nightmare. Say you're typing in a long command, something like this, and you make a typo near the beginning, but you don't see it till later. In a traditional terminal, you're stuck backspacing through the whole thing, or at best, using awkward arrow key maneuvers to go back and fix it. It's like trying to perform surgery with a sledgehammer. And the terminal has always been useless for collaboration. If I needed to share what I was seeing with another dev, I'd have to copy the text, paste it into an Outlook email, figure out why the white text from the console was invisible on the Outlook white background, and so on. Then I would have to hope that they could make sense of all of it, and half the time the formatting would be off, and tabs would be spaces, and spaces would be tabs, and they'd miss the context for the noise. Plus, if I closed the terminal session, my session history was gone. There's no way to pick up where you left off. These are some of the frustrations that the warp terminal aims to fix. It's not just about making the terminal prettier. It's about making it work better for how we use our computers today. So ultimately, what is warp terminal? Well, it's a modern Rust-based terminal emulator designed to address all those pain points that we've just talked about, and then some. The team behind it includes folks who worked on Google Docs, so they probably know a thing or two about building intuitive and collaborative tools. Warp is cross-platform, meaning it works with Bash, ZSH, and now even CMD and PowerShell and Windows. But it's not just about compatibility. It's the reimagining of the terminal experience from the ground up. Warp was born out of frustration with the way things normally worked. The creator saw that while developers were using increasingly sophisticated tools for coding, testing, and deployment, the terminal itself, where all the work actually happened, was still stuck way in the past. So they set out to build a terminal that's as smart and collaborative as the rest of our tool chain. They chose Rust for its performance and safety, ensuring that Warp is fast and reliable. Warp is designed to be approachable for newcomers. There's even an AI assistant to help you learn commands, but it's also packed with features that power users will love. It's kind of the best of both worlds. 
Warp tackles the biggest issues with traditional terminals, the clunky interface, the lack of persistence, the editing headaches, and the solo nature of command line work. Let's take a look at one of Warp's standout features, the block-based interface. In traditional terminals, your session is just a continuous stream of text, commands and output to all mashed together. It's like reading a book with no chapters or paragraphs or headings. Warp changes that by grouping each command and its output into a discrete block. Think of it as turning that endless scroll into a neatly organized notebook. Automatically, it does it. Here's how it works. When you type a command, let's say ls-l and hit enter, Warp creates a block containing that command and its output. You can click on the block to select it, then Warp gives you several options. Copy the command, copy the output, copy both, and so on. You can even copy just the prompt or the working directory if you need that. It's incredibly flexible. But the block-based interface is more than just a cosmetic change. Each block is a self-contained unit that you can interact with independently. For example, if you run a command that produces a lot of output, like git log, you can collapse a block to hide the output and keep your screen tidy. Later, if you need to reference it, it just expand it again. It's like having accordions in your terminal. Navigation is also made pretty simple. You can use the mouse to just click on a block or use the keyboard shortcut like Command Up to jump to previous blocks. This makes it easy to revisit earlier parts of your session without scrolling through pages of text. If you're in a Git repository, Warp can show you the current branch in the block so you know what your context is at all times. It's these thoughtful touches that make Warp feel polished. But here's a feature that surprised me. You can share those blocks. Hit the Share button and Warp generates a permanent web link. Send that link to a colleague and they can see exactly what you see perfectly formatted. I used this the other day when troubleshooting a network issue. I ran netstat-an and shared the block with a friend and he spotted the problem immediately. No screenshots, no copy-paste mess, just a clean, clickable link. It's a small thing, but it saves a lot of time and hassle. So let's talk about editing. In traditional terminals, editing at best is a pain. You're stuck with the arrow keys and backspace, and if you make a mistake in a long command, it's tedious to fix. Warp throws that away. The command line in Warp behaves like a modern text editor. You can click anywhere in the command to place the cursor and use Shift to select text and edit as you please. It's intuitive and it feels natural because it's the way it works in pretty much everything else. For example, I was recently setting up a Docker container with some long command line and halfway through typing, I realized I wanted to use Alpine instead of Ubuntu. Now in a standard terminal, I'm already a couple lines down and I'd have to arrow key back through the whole command, delete Ubuntu and type Alpine. In Warp, I just clicked on Ubuntu, selected it, and then changed it to Alpine. It's such a simple improvement, but it makes a world of difference when you're working with complex commands and you get really used to it. Another editing win is the history. In most terminals, your command history disappears when you close the window, but not with Warp. Your history persists across sessions and it's searchable. Hit Control R and type a few letters and Warp shows you all the matching commands from your past. I can't count how many times I've needed to recall a command I ran a couple days ago because I know I ran the right command and it started with some, you know, run or whatever, and I just, Warp makes it really easy to find it. And now let's talk about the AI workflow because it's where things get pretty crazy. Imagine you're stuck in a command window and you know what you want to do, but the syntax of the command escapes you or the flags or the options. In a traditional terminal, then you'd fire up Google or dig through some man pages and who knows how long that's going to take. Warp says, no, let's make this easy. You just hit control tilde and an AI assistant pops up ready to help. You type your command or your question in plain English and it spits out the exact command with the proper syntax that you need. It's like having a genius co-pilot who never sleeps. I tried it the other day because I'm terrible with git commands and so I just typed, hey, is this folder part of a git repo? Warp's AI came back with the right git command and I hit enter and boom, true popped up. Simple, but handy. And then I pushed it further. What's running on port 8080? Warp suggested netstat aon pipe through finster8080, and in seconds, I had my answer. Back in the 90s, you'd spend 10 minutes flipping through the docs or pinging a teammate or whatever to figure out how do you figure this out and how do you find it, what are the command line options, and so on, but Warp knows it for you. It's like a time machine, too, because it cuts through the noise and you get to the solution fast. But it's not just for simple stuff. Let's say you bone a command. You highlight it and you can ask Warp, what's wrong with this? And it'll say, oh, you meant X copy, not copy. Try X copy, dir1, dir2, slash e. Then it runs it for you if you give it the nod. It's not just a crutch, it's a teacher because now you know for next time. I found it handy to decode errors that I would normally stare at for ages, like a PowerShell script spitting out a parameter not found. Warp explained that I'd missed a dash and I was back in business. The AI assistance appears to be context sensitive as well. 
For example, if you try to run a program like BTOP and it's not present on your system, the automatically suggested next command by warp will be the one you need to install that app using brew. Now let's shift gears to collaboration with warp drive. Traditional terminals are okay for solo work, but terrible for teams. And warp drive flips that. It's a cloud synced feature that lets you save and share workflows, turning your terminal into a collaborative powerhouse. Think of it like Google Docs, but for the command line. And here's how it works. You create a workflow, say a command line like npm install and npm run to spin up a dev environment. In warp drive, you name it something catchy like launch dev, add a description and save it. Next time you need it, it's right there, ready to run with a single click. You can even add optional arguments like specifying a port or a branch so it's flexible. But the real magic? Share it with your team. Everybody then gets the same workflow synced across all their devices. I used to just scribble all these things down on post-it notes or email them to myself or to colleagues, but Warp kind of makes that obsolete. I tested it with a buddy recently. I built a workflow to reset a test server. It was like net stop my service and then Dell logs and then restart the service. I saved it, shared it via Warp Drive, and he ran it on his machine without changing a thing. No copy-paste there, no confusion, just instant sync. There's even real-time session sharing where your teammates can see your terminal live. So you're debugging a deployment and your colleague watches your commands unfold like a screen share, pointing out fixes as you go. Now, Windows users couldn't make use of this before. Warp's been on Mac OS and Linux for a while, but only recently, now, today perhaps, on Windows. Now, the only catch is you do need to sign up for a Warp account for some of the cloud features, and people complained about that online, but they made the core features account free, and so I still think the cloud sync is worth it, so I would suggest signing up. And uh, privacy-wise, they don't log your input or output. Only the AI queries get processed, and that's apparently locked down. And if you're offline, you're still good because the basics all work without a hitch, minus the cloud goodies. Warp's also highly customizable. Out of the box, you get some preloaded themes. Dark mode, light mode, or my favorite, a retro green on black that kind of looks like an old MS-DOS machine. Key bindings, remap them however you like. I've got mine set up like my old DEC VT220 terminal because that's nostalgic and half the fun. It's 98% the same code across Mac OS, Linux, and Windows, so it's consistent no matter where you run it. The noobs get a gentle on-ramp with the AI hints, while power users can tweak it to their heart's content. So there you have it, Warp's Terminal Rewriting the Command Line Rulebook. If you enjoyed today's episode, please remember that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and consider leaving a like on the video before you go. And even a comment would be good. Speaking of comments, we do answer viewer questions every Friday night on Shop Talk, and it's pretty entertaining, but it's hosted on the Dave's Attic channel, so you have to go there to find it if you want to see it. I'll put a link in the video description, and I encourage you to check it out. If you have any interest in matters related to the autism spectrum, check out the link to the free sample of my book on Amazon. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I had known long ago. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here. Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn. Do it, do it.